Now to 40,000 pounds of protein. That's what was donated to families in Guadalupe County this morning. Tyson Foods teamed up with the New Braunfels Food Bank and Santicos Entertainment Center to support families in need. As Alicia Barrera reports, that donation will also help stock shelves at a local food bank. It was definitely a chilly morning, but the hearts of many were warmed as they were waiting in line to receive this generous donation. The event kicked off exactly at 9 a.m. with volunteers eager to get good food into the cars of families in the area. Families received bread, milk, veggies, drinks, noodles, potato flakes. Some even received canned items, but the main item here was the 20 pound box of Tyson chicken tenderloins. The surprise item for the first 120 people was a turkey. And this is a big help for families as we lead into the holidays. So how did this all come about? New Braunfels Food Bank actually applied to be partners with Tyson Foods through their community pantry program that focuses on working with community agencies. And we're so blessed to have a Tyson facility in Seguin where it just makes it where we're neighbors. And so they've blessed us throughout the years with great product. Part of the 40,000 protein donation will also help stock the shelves at the San Antonio Food Bank to be distributed later this month for the holidays. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. The Texas Cavaliers will be joined by a famous singer for this year's River Parade. The organization announced Randy Rogers will be the honorary Grand Marshal for the parade this year. It is an honor to be involved with an organization that has such a positive impact on the children of San Antonio and South Texas. I'm very excited about the upcoming events we have planned for Fiesta, of course. On a personal note, I love San Antonio. I've always been drawn to this city. Uh, throughout my career, I've played almost every venue from small to the biggest. Um, I love the culture here. I love the people. I love the music. I love the food. And I'm truly honored to be a your grand marshal. So, with all that said, Viva San Antonio and Viva Fiesta. Cavaliers River Free going a little country this year, huh? I, I like it. I like that. The charitable honoree will be Haven for Hope. This year's theme is Texas Al Fresco, celebrating the outdoors, and the Texas Cavaliers River Parade Fiesta Medal also embodies that theme. Fiesta 2022 is scheduled for, okay, listen up, March 31st through April 10th, a little Ooh. earlier for the parade than last year. Thank goodness. The Texas Cavaliers River Parade is slated for April 4th. Let's hope the earlier dates mean some... Less Look. humid weather, mm -hmm. uh, but Ooh. the confetti's still going to stick, right? The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, meantime, just a few months away, but the entertainment lineup continues to grow. Four more artists just added. So the list now includes Ludacris, the rapper and Fast and Furious actor. He'll perform on February 17th. Mickey Gaetan will hit the stage February 20th. Brett Young performing on February 24th. And you can catch Jimmy Allen on February 26th. They, of course, are joining some other big names. Also part of the lineup, Toby Keith, Tim McGraw, Styx, and Night Ranger. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo will be held February 10th through the 27th at the AT&T Center and Freeman Coliseum grounds. Tickets on sale now. Go to SARodeo.com for those. The River Parade going country, the rodeo going old school. <laughs> That's right, yeah, <laughs> in some ways. Okay, let's take a look outside right now. What a gray day. It just feels like fall, finally. Feels like November. Did you guys check your rain gauges? Yes. Yes, I good did. rain? Almost two and a half inches. Huh? Some oh, big numbers. Okay. How about that? Some big numbers in the whole country. Yeah. We'll show you some of those totals here in just a second. The aquifer obviously benefited from yesterday's rain, up seven tenths of a foot to 666.5. In your bottom count, it's just molds. We thought that might jump up a little bit. It didn't, uh, so looking good there. We've got a pretty good looking forecast as we head into the weekend. Your seven day forecast is coming up. I just hope people are able to find their coats way back in the closet somewhere because they need to dust them off. Yeah. Yeah. The comfy warm shoes. 
It is 53 degrees out there right now, Justin. Yeah, when I was picking up my kiddos yesterday from school, I saw a lot of kids kind of in shock because that cold <laughs> hit yesterday. They, they had their jackets with them, but they weren't prepared, man. It was, uh, it, was it got chilly quick yesterday. Yes, it and did. And now we're looking at those uh, chilly temperatures again today because cloud cover is just not breaking up. Let's take a look at the visible satellite picture and you can see where, uh, where the cloud deck stands. There is some drier air, at least some clearing, trying to work in from the north and east, but I don't think that clearing line makes it down here. We'll probably stay cloudy throughout the rest of today. It's just the Texas Panhandle, far west Texas, and that uh, break in the clouds up there across northeast Texas where there is some sun. All of south Texas still underneath these clouds. And the rain has gone away. I mean, the showers, we had some earlier. Those have since dissipated. So we're not worried about rain today. But you can see the cloud deck that is uh, stuck around through the morning. And temperatures at this hour, 53 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 46. North northeast chilly winds at about 10 miles per hour. That always makes it feel a little bit chillier, especially when we were down around 50 or in the 40s this morning. There was a little bit of a wind chill. Uh, 48 right now, Bernie Stage, 55, Castroville, 54, and Hondo, 54 right now in New Braunfels. A little bit of thinning in the clouds there near Seguin, so the sun may briefly pop out, but don't expect much of that today. 56, Cotula, 56 down in Laredo. And there's a look at the winds. Not too, too bad. We're seeing some sustained winds around 10 miles per hour, maybe up to about 15 miles per hour there in New Braunfels with some gusts a little bit higher than that. So as I mentioned, there is a bit of a wind chill in spots. you got to go up into the hill country where it feels like 45 in Kerrville, 42 right now in Fredericksburg. In the wind gust forecast, these winds will die down. So we'll see less wind tonight and certainly into tomorrow. So it will not be as breezy. Uh, let's talk about the drought monitor. This just came in today. This does not take into account last night's rain, so keep that in mind. But it's getting worse. 33% of the state is now in drought, and that's generally up across the panhandle. And then down to our, our area, we are seeing some of that. So this orange color here represents severe drought, and that's around Carrizo Springs. But I mentioned that this did not include yesterday's rainfall. Let me show you yesterday's rainfall right there over Carrizo Springs. We got some good rain, 1.23. So that should help some. And as we look at the numbers further north, David mentioned some good rain up across Comal County. We saw 1.04 in Spring Branch, about half an inch in Holotus, 0.43 at the airport. Places like Elmendorf picked up close to two inches. So there were some decent numbers yesterday as that rain came through. Again, we're done with the rain today. Temperatures up around 56 degrees for a high, and then we'll see them step down into the uh, low 50s and eventually 40s by tomorrow morning with maybe a little bit of clearing. If you're heading out to some of the uh, Thursday night football games tonight, 54 kickoff, 52 at halftime, uh, cloudy skies. It's going to be chilly. Take the coat, take the blanket with you if you're checking out some of those games. And then we got some big ones tonight. 47 tomorrow morning, 66 coming up tomorrow. Clearing. We'll see those clouds eventually break up some. And then we'll see some sun tomorrow afternoon, which should boost those temperatures. 71 Saturday, 75 Sunday. Don't forget to fall back. And then next week we'll get some more clouds and some warmer temperatures. Highs in the upper 70s, close to 80 by Tuesday and Wednesday, guys. Did I miss the kick? I was looking down at the... <laughs> well, I think, I think you know the end result, David. It doesn't, doesn't really change. Okay, so it was good. <laughs> Of course it is. Justin is the most accurate kicker out there when it comes to an animation like that. It never misses. Wow. I can't believe that. We need some more accuracy from the Spurs is what we need. We do. And the Spurs also need Jalen Brunson from the Mavs to be less accurate. Wow. There you go. Because Jalen Brunson really did in the Spurs down the stretch last night. We'll have more on that coming up. I mean, look at those moves and the hoop. Plus, Orlando played Boston last night before they host the Spurs tomorrow night coming up. The AT&T Center playing host of the Spurs and the Dallas Mavericks last night. Late fourth quarter, Spurs down three. DeJounte Murray drives and banks it off the window for two of his team high 23 points. Back at the other end, Jalen Brunson working over Devin Vassell. Baseline fadeaway is good, and Dallas goes back up by three. Same score, less than 20 seconds left. Derek White with a clear lane drives in for an easy Slam dunk. Spurs trail 105-104. Down four now. Murray passes to Lonnie. Walker the fourth for three, and he's good. So the Mavs lead is down to one, 109-108. Same score. Spurs inbounding the ball after the Mavs miss two free throws, and the Spurs turn it over. So game over. Spurs fall to the Mavs 109-108.
108. Pop with hugs for Jay Kidd and Boban after the game. Jalen Brunson scored 13 of his game high 31 points in the fourth quarter. I've been knowing Brunson since high school. We were the same class, so I've been knowing him since 16 years old. And that's one thing that always stood out with him from back then to now. I think that's why he's in the NBA. Uh, he's undersized, but he can outsmart you know, guys taller than him. So he's really great at that. And uh, he just killed us both games uh, in Dallas and then here tonight. So, you know, hats off to him. You know, he plays really hard, plays really smart, and he plays to his best abilities. All right, the Spurs will play at the Orlando Magic tomorrow night at 6. Both teams are below 500. Jalen Brown and the Celtics playing at Orlando last night. Boston trailed by as many as eight points in the second quarter, and they trailed 46-44 at halftime. But Boston blew out the Magic in the third, outscoring them 31-10 to to take control of the game. Brown scored eight of his game-high 28 points in the third. Boston made 12 of 18 shots in the third quarter, compared to just two for 17 from Orlando. Boston wins it 92-79. to Orlando is now 2-7. and seven. In college football, Incarnate Word is hard to work getting ready to host number six, Southeastern Louisiana. The Cardinals are off to their best start in program history at 6-2 and two overall and 4-1 and one in Southland Conference play. They most recently beat Houston Baptist 49-21. to The Cardinals have three regular season games left, but this one marks their final home game this season. Sounds like the fans are about to see a great show. Oh, you know, it's going to be a great game all around. Uh, you got two great offenses, two great defenses going at it. Uh, you know, you got two quarterbacks, me and Cole Kelly. He's a potential uh, draft pick. It's just going to be a great game all around. I mean, anytime you're playing a top 10 team at your place, and, and obviously there's playoff um, playoffs on the line coming down to it in a conference championship. I mean, our kids know what's at stake. Uh, we built this mantra of finish during the off season, and we put ourselves in a position that if we finish strong, then, you know, we control our own destiny. So. Carter Werber hosts Southeastern Louisiana Saturday 2 p.m. at Gale and Tom Benson Stadium. And in Southland Conference Soccer, a women's tournament, and Carter Word beat HBU 4-0 yesterday in Corpus. It marked the first Southland Conference tournament win for the Cardinals in program history. So the Cardinals will take on number two seed McNeese in the semifinals at 4 p.m. Friday. So you got the Cardinals and yep. you've got UTSA, both local high, uh, college teams. Both dominate. doing great. Love that. Yep. Right. Thanks, Larry. Yeah, thanks, Larry. Parents have more options now when it comes to protecting their children from COVID-19 since vaccines were approved for kids 5 to 11. However, some may still worry about the shot. Doctors debunk myths after the break. All over the country, the COVID-19 vaccine now available to more children. This comes after it was approved for children ages 5 to 11. However, some parents are still not sure if they want their kids to get vaccinated just yet. Some are concerned that the vaccine could affect their child's future. As, as CNN's Mandy Gaither explains, doctors are addressing these worries and hoping to debunk some vaccine myths. It's official. Children ages 5 to 11 are now eligible to receive Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. Having that 5 to 11 vaccine available to them is a huge achievement um, for, for us as pediatricians. So we're very eagerly excited uh, to, to be able to finally vaccinate this, this age group. A recent survey found that 66% of parents with children in that age group worry that vaccines might negatively impact children's future fertility. It unfortunately came from a bit of misinformation and it got picked up in the press and um, propagated through social media. The American Academy of Pediatrics, or AAP, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists are united with other doctors and public health officials in saying fertility is not a concern when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine. I would be the first person who would jump up and down and make a fuss if there was a connection here. There simply is not, and we don't need to worry about this one. AAP spokesperson Dr. Hina Talib also says the COVID-19 vaccine won't affect puberty and won't permanently alter menstrual cycles. Any parent with vaccine concerns is urged to reach out to their child's doctor. I think most pediatricians will be able to, to talk you through uh, what you need to know in order to make that informed decision. Um, and it's based on science, it's based on research, uh, it's not based on some of the fear-based information that we're seeing on the internet. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. 
And right now on KSAT.com, you can hear from local health officials and doctors about the COVID-19 vaccine for children. They're addressing more concerns that parents may have. Also on our website, information on where and when you can get your child vaccinated. You can find it all on the coronavirus section of KSAT.com. Meanwhile, Moderna is now warning that shipments of its COVID-19 vaccine will fall short of expectations. The pharmaceutical company says that it's dealing with production and shipment issues. That sounds familiar, right? Moderna now expects to ship between 700 million and 800 million vaccine doses instead of the 800 million to a billion doses originally forecasted. The company says that some deliveries could be pushed back to 2022, especially those for foreign exports overseas. Moderna plans to give priority to low income countries. Its COVID vaccine is the first major product that Moderna has produced and is responsible for almost all of its business. Britain has granted a conditional authorization to Merck's coronavirus antiviral medication. It's the first pill shown to successfully treat COVID-19. The UK is the first country to okay that treatment, but it's not clear how quickly the drug will be available. It's intended to be taken at home twice a day for five days by people with mild to moderate COVID-19. An antiviral pill that reduces symptoms and speeds recovery could prove groundbreaking easing caseloads on hospitals and helping to curb outbreaks. Unemployment claims have hit another pandemic low as fewer Americans apply for benefits. It's yet another sign the job market is healing after taking a huge hit because of COVID-19. Jobless claims dropped by 14,000 last week. Overall, 2.1 million Americans collected unemployment checks last week. That is down from 7.1 million a year earlier when the economy was still reeling from the coronavirus outbreak. Outside with live cam, yes, fall is here today, but you know, it probably won't be here this weekend. Here today, gone tomorrow. Exactly. <laughs> As goes in South Texas. That's how we operate. Yeah, we should be back into the 80s next week. So this is kind of a one day thing. Let's take a look at the lows this morning. We dropped down to 50 here in San Antonio, 46 in Kerrville and uh, around the area, 54 Del Rio, 52 in Eagle Pass. What's interesting about this is yeah, we got down to 50, but uh, look where we are now, 53. We've only gained three degrees, and we may only gain another three degrees before it's all said and done. We're forecasting a high of 56 today. Cloud cover keeping temperatures in check, so we're not seeing a lot of warming. 49 Kerrville, 46 in Fredericksburg, 54 right now in Carrizo Springs. There's the scene outside. As you just saw, cloudy skies. And uh, here in town, we're at 53 with a dew point of 46. North northeasterly winds at around 10 miles per hour. Those winds will continue to decrease. We'll see less wind this evening and tonight, which will allow for some cool temperatures to start tomorrow. Again, a high 56, 54, 6 o'clock, 53 by 8 o'clock. We should see the clouds break up on your Friday, and the weather will turn out to be really nice by tomorrow afternoon. We'll have another look at that forecast, the weekend forecast, here in just a few minutes. Guys? Thank you, Justin. China increasing its nuclear arsenal at a much faster rate than the U.S. had anticipated. That's according to a report from the Pentagon. The report says China may have a thousand nuclear warheads by the end of the decade. That's more than double what U.S. officials estimated only a year ago. Now the chairman of the Joint Chiefs issuing this stark warning of China's military capabilities. We're witnessing one of the largest shifts in global geostrategic power that the world has witnessed. The U.S. has 3,750 nuclear warheads in its stockpile. In the race for governor of New Jersey, the Democratic candidate has narrowly won re-election. This comes after Glenn Youngkin became the first Republican to win statewide office in a dozen years in Virginia. Those contests sending a warning, many believe, to Democrats that their grip on power in Washington may be in danger. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden still pushing to pass his domestic agenda as soon as possible, hoping that will sway voters during the midterm elections. I think we should produce for the American people. We have to just produce results for them to change their standard of living and give them a little more breathing room. House Democrats saying Wednesday they plan to add paid family leave provisions back into the social bill. The trial for the suspects accused of killing Ahmad Arbery begins tomorrow. However, ahead of those proceedings, it's the jurors that are making headlines. Of the 12 jurors who will be sworn in tomorrow, 11 of them are white and only one is African American. Race matters in this case because prosecutors are arguing that Arbery, a black man, would have never been stopped by the white suspects if he too were white. 
In court yesterday, the judge said out loud that the jury could have been more diverse. This court has found that there appears to be uh, intentional uh, discrimination in the panel. Quite a few African-American jurors were excused through preemptory strikes exercised by the defense. But that doesn't mean that the court has the, the authority to reseat. The three suspects have pleaded not guilty. They say they saw Arbery walking away from a construction site in their neighborhood before the shooting and say that the shooting was justified under Georgia's citizen's arrest statute, which was the law at the time. The outrage over the law was so great that lawmakers in Georgia on both sides of the aisle got rid of it earlier this year. The Texas may finally have something good happen for him this weekend. Larry Mears with that coming up. And less pain at the pumps after seeing gas prices climb. We're now starting to see them stabilize. So could a drop in prices be near? Details coming up after the break. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. CVS looking to add doctors to their payroll so they can become a major healthcare provider. The CEO says the pharmacy chain considering this a priority for the next year and they're looking to move quickly. Throughout recent years, CVS has been working on an established healthcare system centered around pharmacists, in-store clinics, and an insurance business. Meanwhile, Bed Bath & Beyond says their stock surge just a moment in time. This is they look to continue their turnaround plan. The CEO made the statement after a slew of big announcements by the brick and mortar chain, including a new digital marketplace and a partnership with Kroger. Bed Bath & Beyond also expecting to complete for a billion dollar share repurchase plan by the end of the fiscal year, two years ahead of schedule. And Kathy Wood's ARK Invest going all in on Zillow stock after its sharp price plunge. Zillow saw their shares fall after announcing that they're shutting down their home buying business. The company makes the move as the unpredictability of forecasting home prices has become too volatile beyond their expectations. Zillow also wasn't helped by their earnings and revenue miss for the quarter. And that's Cheddar News, business and tech update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Some good news for drivers, especially since a lot of folks may be hitting the road this holiday season. Gas prices appear to be stabilizing. As ABC's Gio Benitez reports, we may even see gas prices fall in the near future. We've been reporting on rising gas prices for weeks, but now signs that they may be stabilizing just a bit. Take a look at the national average right now, 341 a gallon. That's still a bit high, but here's the good news. The price only went up by two cents since last week, and that is the smallest weekly increase in a month. Now, experts over at AAA saying this morning there's a little dip in domestic demand for gas right now, and that steady increase in crude oil prices may actually be taking a breather. Now, if that trend continues, we could be seeing some smaller price hikes and gas buddy tells us that we could be seeing even some small decline so we'll take the wins where we can get them geo benitez abc news new york look outside with live cam this afternoon there's just a lot of clouds a lot of clouds and cool air out there justin yeah, it's uh, it's chilly today. We've had the clouds stick around. Temperatures haven't moved that much so far today. 53 the high, but we started off at 50, so we've only gained three degrees. The extremes 94 that was set back in 1988 and 28. So it can get as cold as the upper 20s this time of year. That was set back in 1991. Freezing temperatures are not in our forecast, but it does get chilly tomorrow morning. We drop back down into the 40s. Another look at your seven day coming up. A new study by Grammarly found people who were promoted several times at work made 45% fewer grammatical errors than those who'd been promoted fewer times. So are grammar mistakes hurting your career? Sarah Costa has some pro tips that can help. Pop quiz, do you know the difference between affect and effect? Affect something would be to influence it. Uh, an effect 
is what happens when something is done. Effect is a verb, while effect is a noun. Think of A for action and effect, and E for ending result and effect. For example, the drought affected plant growth, or the cup of coffee had no effect. What about ensure and insure? Insure is insurance. I would take it, and insure I always think of as a drink. Insure is to protect, while ensure is to guarantee. We insured the house. We lock the gate to ensure the dog doesn't get out. Which is correct? I'm going to lay down, or I'm going to lie down. Lie is correct. Lay will need a direct object to be placed on. I lay my purse on the table. What's the difference between regardless and irregardless? The number one difference is that irregardless is not a word. If you need a little help from time to time, tools such as Grammarly, Hemingway, and WordTune can assist with grammar and word choices. Research found businesses with bad grammar and spelling mistakes on their websites will lose almost double the number of potential customers than those with typo-free sites. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Back. Did you get all that? Okay. Were I, you on it? We did a little quiz while we were watching that. Yeah. What, what was your mom's tip for? Chickens lay eggs, people lie down. Chickens lay eggs, people lie down. And Justin nailed the irregardless. <laughs> Not a word. Not a thing. Not a thing. Not a thing. Not a thing. We, no. did we did pretty well. I think I need a couple more raises, though, or promotions, I think, to help my grandma. Okay. We'll make sure. We'll make sure the boss saw that. <laughs> That's what it yeah. takes. That happen. <laughs> I'm getting better at it, getting promotions than. Yeah. Okay, so I, I have a feeling the quizzes aren't, aren't stopping there. Is that right? I didn't arrange this. I mean, I didn't know we were going to have a grammar oh, quiz before, <laughs> before weather, <laughs> but we're going to go right into some. Science here. Oh, okay. So, Next subject. Ooh, 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 I know this one. Well, okay. First off, let me just say News Now, 11 a.m. It's our digital show. I did this <laughs> quiz. So if you're watching earlier, then you know the answer. But uh, here we go. At what temperature do you begin calculating wind chill? What do you guys think? You know the answer. I know the answer to this one. Okay. Well, so do I because I watch News Now. See? <laughs> so, Mark, glad you tuned in. Yeah, uh, yes, I didn't yeah. cheat. I tuned in. So, <laughs> so what is the answer? It is uh, 50. So at 50 degrees or below, you start to calculate wind chill. And that's when okay. we, so and the reason I bring this up is because we were right at 50 this morning. So we had a little bit of a wind chill here, but certainly in the hill country, we were dealing with it. And in News Now, I showed the equation that they come up with wind chill, and you just don't want to see it. I mean, it's long, <laughs> it's involved. Just trust me, there's a wind chill when you get below 50 degrees. And uh, it felt pretty chilly this morning in spots. Right now, we've got cloudy skies, 53 degrees. And dew point is at 46 north northeast Julie winds at about 10 miles per hour. Winds have been pretty steady. They will calm some later today and uh, we won't have to worry about wind chills anymore. 50 in Bandera, 54 Hondo, 52 in Divine, 56 in Pleasanton. Still some 40s though, Fredericksburg to Kerrville. Uh, so it is definitely a chilly day. One of the chillier days we've seen in a, in a long time. Uh, sustained winds, I mentioned, around 10 miles per hour here in San Antonio. They're up around 14 miles per hour in New Braunfels with some gusts a little bit higher than that in spots. So there's the wind chill. 41 is what it feels like in Fredericksburg, 46 in Kerrville. Those are the kind of the two spots where there still is uh, technically a wind chill. Uh, satellite picture shows that we are socked in here with cloud cover. There are some breaks as you get up towards, say, Waco, but that clearing line, I just don't know if it's going to make it all the way down here. So. We likely stay cloudy through sunset. By tomorrow, though, those clouds will begin to break up, and then we'll see some sun tomorrow afternoon. Now, there's the bigger picture, and you can see these clouds, these low clouds, extend from Oklahoma City down to Dallas, over to Midland, Odessa, and then back towards uh, San Antonio and all the way down to the valley. There are some showers down there around Brownsville, by the way, too, as that front has made it all the way through Texas. Temperatures? 52 in Abilene, 52 Dallas, 54 in Houston. It's pretty uniform here, and it, uh, it, it's chilly. We look at the big picture. Everybody really is uh, pretty cool. This cool air mass is more or less spread across the country. Now, there's a couple spots, obviously, that are warm. 76, Phoenix. Uh, there's some warm spots there in the desert southwest. And in Miami, 82. It's always warm there, right? Uh, they don't get the cold air, at least not uh, this time of year. So here's a look at the forecast for the rest of today. 56, our forecast high, cloudy skies, 54 at 6 o'clock, 53, 8 p.m., and then eventually we'll work our way down into the 40s by tomorrow morning. 47 to start your Friday, 66 clearing skies, a great weekend. 
Next week, we will see some more moisture, more cloud cover, and warmer temperatures, too. We'll be near 80 by Tuesday and Wednesday, and those morning lows, by the way, drift back into the 50s and even 60s by Tuesday and Wednesday morning. We'll be right back. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Yesterday, quarterback Dak Prescott was listed as limited in the Cowboys practice report with a strained right calf. But prior to the workout, head coach Mike McCarthy told us it was going to be a short practice since the Cowboys played on Sunday night and managed to pull out a 20 to 16 victory without Dak and win their sixth game in a row. So what will McCarthy do to evaluate whether Prescott is ready to return against the Broncos this Sunday? Just really how he comes out of today's practice, you know, I mean, obviously it's it's no different than any player once he goes through the, you know, uh, you know, release the play through the rehab process. So he's he's crossed that hurdle. And so, you know, we'll, he has a certain number of reps he'll take today and we'll evaluate in the morning. Cowboys linebacker Micah Parsons was named the NFC's Defensive Player of the Week for his 11 tackles, four tackles for loss. And the Cowboys wore a red stripe to go along with their blue and white stripes on their helmets this Sunday in a tribute to veterans. Losers of seven straight, the Houston Texans are going back to quarterback Tyrod Taylor. He's healthy and ready to go again. Taylor has not played since the second quarter in Week 2 at Cleveland when he hurt his left hamstring. This morning, Coach Coley said Taylor is good to go. Before he was hurt in week two, Taylor had completed 70.5% of his passes for 416 yards, three touchdowns, and no interceptions. Uh, he's, our, he's healthy. And he's our starting quarterback. Well, there's no setbacks in uh, the hamstring. He's been just fine. And hopefully he's that way today and tomorrow. So that's important, but here, the thing is this, is he was our starting quarterback, and um, he got hurt, and he's back healthy now, and and he started and the fact that he's been uh, our leader going into the year um, will that help us I hope so we'll see the Texans will play at the Miami Dolphins Sunday at noon Miami is currently favored by five and a half points the 8-0 UTSA Roadrunners are one of only six unbeaten teams in college football and they're 11 point favorites against UTEP as the road team, the Roadrunners are ranked 16th in the nation are coming off their bye week, while the Miners are coming off their first conference USA loss against FAU 28-25. Even with all those accolades, the chairman of the college football playoff committee, Gary Barta, mistakenly called UTSA USTA or United States Tennis Association. Head coach Jeff Trailer seized the moment, tweeting out faces of his players over the top of tennis players. My fave is that one. Frank Harris smiling. I mean, that's good stuff. I mean, we're undefeated, so if you don't know, like, the school name by now, at least, you know, say it right, but, I mean, they're just poking the bear. Y'all know UTSA, we're, we're undefeated. Um, I feel like uh, there's a little hostility towards us um, on that, so uh, that kind of motiv motivated us today. UTSA <laughs> will play at UTEP Saturday night at 9.15. Maybe That's should, hilarious. Maybe they should pack some tennis rackets when they come to the stadium. <laughs> yeah. well, I think the football team should have a tennis tournament once the season's <laughs> over, see who the best tennis player is. Wouldn't that be go. funny? Yeah. That'd be awesome. Thanks, Larry. Great stuff. <laughs> All right, downtown. Speaking of great stuff, it's always great stuff on SA Live. Yeah, let's see what Mike and Fiona are up to in Market Square. Hi, guys. How are you? <laughs> hey there. Well, we have some great fall recipes on the show today with Chef Leo Davila from Sticks and Stone. And if you're not a huge fan of mushrooms, you've got a way to make it delicious for everyone, right? Yeah, absolutely. So what we do is we slice them really thin. Mm -hmm. And then what helps with that is it gets all the water out of the mushroom. So a lot of times when you go to eat the mushroom, it's a little bit watery, has a little bit almost like a snot-like texture. Yeah. Uh, by cooking the water all the way out uh, just really helps and, uh, you know, just makes it more for a more flavorful application. Get them nice and caramelized, right? Absolutely, nice and caramelization. Okay, wait to see what we uh, add to this with some creamy polenta. All yes, right, it is holiday time. Yes, and we are getting crafty for Thanksgiving and the holidays by making handmade gifts at a local craft house studio. Jen is standing by. 
Yes, we are feeling awfully thankful today, right? And getting into the holiday spirit here. Here's a tip that we learned here at Pinspiration. Add some non-traditional colors to your decor as you're setting up for Thanksgiving and just make it pop a little bit more. We're gonna show you a few things that they have going on here for Thanksgiving and also for Christmas. Yep, I said it, Christmas. Uh, that and much more that's coming a up. You're making Mike smile so big right now. And our dear friend Jada Rashawn, <laughs> speaking of great crafts, we have got a couple of them and we're gonna make a little bit of a mess too, but something fun that you can do with the kids. And we've got a list of weekend events to help you celebrate the holidays and kickstart it. Why not? You yep. know? Christmas lights this weekend. <laughs> Why not? Yes, indeed. And here's the question. Hot spiced mm -hmm. cider or Mexican hot chocolate. Ooh, you choose one. Weigh in and let us know both. at SA Live Case out on Facebook and Twitter. Um, all that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.